Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our fire relief fundraiser. We've got seven great companies that are going to present today and also help out some of the communities that have been affected this summer by uh, terrible wildfires. And next up, we have a new company, but an old friend of the firm, Amandeep Singh, uh, who is VP Corp Dev of West Red Lake. And if you're like me, you hadn't heard of West Red Lake until last week or two weeks ago when Evan Deep messaged us that he wanted to participate and support our fundraisers. So thanks for reaching out, Evan Deep. Uh, and congrats on the new gig. Really excited to hear what you're doing. Um, we did do some interviews way back years ago with uh, Pure Gold. And I remember Cloud Resources. So I do know a little bit about the mats in mind, but interested to hear uh, your, your team's plans. Hey, yeah, no, guys, thank you so much for having us. And um, it's a great cause. So, um, you know, it, it, it's just wonderful being here. And yeah, you guys, you know, a lot of your listeners are probably familiar with, you know, the story in, in, in one form or the other. It, it's, it's been around for a while and, um, you know, and, and it does bring up its fair share of skeptics as well. But, um, you know, I think I think we've put together uh, quite an exciting team and um, a, a plan going forward. And I think, um, you know, the asset... If, if you look at it now, the amount of money, it was in production as recently as um, August of 2022, you know, brand new mill. It's still got that, you know, new car smell happening there. So um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot that we can, we can build on. And, and, you know, I think, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to walk everyone through it and uh, if there's yeah. any questions we could. You've got uh, a presentation for us. Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm going to hit that share screen. If you just give me a moment. And my colleague Magda is joining us because she's going to help with some of the Q and the A on the next couple presentations. I don't know if you've met previously, I'm in deep. Uh, no, but I'm sure, you know what, there, it's, uh, there, there's hardly any degrees of separation in this industry. So I'm sure we've run into one of them. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you kick it off and uh, tell us a little bit about West Red Lake? Yeah, certainly. So, you know what, just to, just to start off, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys can see that screen, but uh, to give you a sense of, uh, you know, the high grade here, what you're seeing behind there, that's actually a picture from underground of, uh, you know, a wall that's covered in visible gold. And, and, you know, I know we just like to be dramatic and, um, you know, kind of give you a sense of what we're working with. But but really, when we do our investor tours, we we always make sure that we take people down to this spot in the wall. And, um, you know, happy to share that with everyone that's uh, that's here today. Obviously, some cautionary statements or will be some forward looking statements, but uh, we'll just get right through there. You know, in terms of, um, you know, Frank Juster is a, a gentleman that uh, obviously we're all familiar with. And I think I think for us, you know, part of the vision here was, you um, you know, we wanted to fill a gap that existed in uh, in Red Lake. When you look at Red Lake, there was, um, you know, you're, in terms of investments, you, there's there's a lot of senior producers there. You're either buying a Barrick, you're buying a, you're buying a Kinross, you're buying, uh, you know, uh, Evolution Mining, and, and and I think you know, as you know, unfortunately, anything that happens in Red Lake does not tend to move the needle that much for those senior producers, and I, and I think that was evidence. Recently, by the uh, the big acquisition of uh, Great Bear Resources by Kinross, I would argue the Kinross share price did not react at all to such tremendous news. So, really, you know, we wanted to give investors the opportunity to 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 get in on the ground floor, get in early, be part of that sort of uplift that happens. And and you know, if you care about Red Lake as a jurisdiction, you know, I would argue that we are the only game in town. We're the most significant. Um, junior exploration development story there. We've got nearly 3 million ounces on the books, you know, fully permitted mine and mill, clearly the team to move this thing forward. And, um, and ultimately, you know, this is a capital intensive business. And I think, you know, between Frank and, and everyone that we know through that, through our office and, and contacts, um, you know, our ability to raise money, I think does give us an inherent edge. And, uh, and, you know, as a warm and fuzzy sort of, uh, you know, sentiment here, you know, Gold Corp was a company that Mr. Juice has started and it went from a, you know, $20 million to a $50 billion market cap in 10 years. And I, and I think we're really trying to, uh, you know, redo that Gold Corp 2.0 model. And, uh, and you know, it, it's, it's Frank's return to Red Lake. It's from where it first began. You know, this gives you a sense of where we are, you know, surrounded by some very exciting, pro um, you know, seniors, as, as I mentioned. But we're in the red here. So we've got two projects, our newly acquired flagship Madsen Mine. And, um, you know, when we went into this, we also had our own um, group of assets and that and that's the Rowan project that uh, it's comprised of three past producing mines 
Uh, if you look at some recent uh, exploration results that have come out of Rowan, there has just been um, the team's been doing a great, great job out there. Extremely high grade drill results coming out of there. And, and we really think based on how close they are, the proximity of it, uh, you know, uh, the ability to upsize our mill, we really do think that Rowan is going to be a big part of our future. Uh, you know, when we sort of uh, start rolling out that hub and spoke model using that that Madsen mill and, and, and getting feed from from the uh, satellite deposits in the area. Uh, you know, I, I think I think one of our strengths, if you look at our team, uh, you know, we brought in um, Shane Williams. This is a person that, uh, you know, you guys have, you would have known him from Skeena when he was when he was part of the SK Creek um, deposit there. But really, you know, when he was at El Dorado, that was um when El Dorado acquired the Lamac project, I would argue that Lamac was further behind or less advanced than where we are at right now. But 18 months later, they put that into production and um, Lamac to present day is one of El Dorado's number one performing uh, assets. So I think, I think that's really important, especially in sort of like a restart scenario. And, and, you know, when you look at, at teams that have, have come before us, you know, there's, there, there's been explorationists, there have been mind builders, but, you know, not really the, the restart specialist that, that we've put together. You know, we work uh, amongst uh, two First Nations communities in the areas, uh, you know, also the, the, the town of Red Lakes, very supportive to us. You know, we've added Derek Teven to our, our, our team. You guys would have known him as uh, Senior VP of uh, Community Affairs from Detour Lake. Uh, you know, he's got personal ties to the community. And, and, and I think it's important to, to establish that day one. Will Robinson comes to us from Coor Mining. We're bringing that big company pedigree to ourselves early days. Maurice, VP Tech Services, you know, did a lot of work at the um, at the Red Lake Mining Complex for um, for Evolution. So, so, you know, people are, uh, you know, very familiar with the area, very familiar with the needs to be done. And then, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the, the signaling that we're doing to the market, you know, if you look at our board, you know, Tony McCooch, Duncan Middlemiss, Hugh Agro, these are these are some guys that, you know, not only have, uh, you know, built mines and and companies, but 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 more importantly, have de delivered a lot of value for uh, for their respective shareholders. And, and, and we couldn't be happier to have them. And, and, and I think, you know, in the landscape of the the junior exploration development story, I, again, would challenge most any company. Uh, you know, of our size to to really have that caliber board and management, and and I think you'd be hard pressed to to kind of find a team that uh, you know is so committed and, and and has the background that our team does. Uh, you know, the Madsen project in terms of you know high level, what our plan is. Um, obviously, it's a mine. It was in production. There are maintenance costs associated with it. Uh, step one, we're reducing all the ongoing liability or liabilities or or care and maintenance costs, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, again, we want to make sure that our um, our permits stay active. I, I think that is one of the biggest value drivers of what we have, and and so so we are bringing down um, you know all activities to the very lowest level that will um, that that will keep those permits active. Uh, again, you know, I think the engineering that happened here was second to none. They've built a phenomenal mine. The infrastructure is is you know world class. I think. I think some of the some of the gaps that need to be filled are with geologically with understanding that resource. So you know before we even think about putting this back into production, we're going to de-risk that resource. We're going to have a big infill program. It's underway right now, and obviously a big exploration program that's uh, also ongoing. And that and and only after that, when we have that comfort, are we going to start that restart planning? You know, execute on our vision and 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 really all of this. We're looking at a eighteen to twenty four month restart. On, on the Madison mine. And, and, and again, all the while, you know, making sure that we, we foster those wonderful relationships with the community. I know, you know, unfortunately, based on, uh, you know, on, on some previous operator history, we, you know, we, we do have some, you know, trust to gain in the community. I think, um, you know, but everyone does want us to succeed and, and, and we're a bit of a show me story and, and, and we're, we're certainly, uh, you know, on the ground making things happen. Uh, to, you know, and I'm just going to go through this for, for all your listeners to, uh, you know, you, the word transformative is thrown around a lot. You know, it, it's one of these buzzwords, but but this truly was transformative for us. You know, prior to us going into this uh, this acquisition, you know, we had 832,000 ounces at our Rowan project. We have tripled that to nearly 3 million ounces across the um, the entire asset base or, or portfolio. You know, we have doubled our land position by by nearly two hundred percent. 
you know, and again, you guys all know the pure gold story, you know, developers of the year, you know, north of a billion dollar valuation. So this asset at one point in time commanded north of a billion dollars in, in valuation. We look to capture, you know, each and every one of those dollars, if not more, you know, $350 million have been spent on the, uh, on the asset. And, um, you know, we managed to get it for six and a half million dollars cash. Um, at the time, just shy of $10 million in shares and a 1% NSR. Uh, you know, there is a deferred payment component uh, and that's in, in, in place in the, in the event of a change of control. But, but really, if you look at what we, what we did, you know, overnight, you know, we, we really became a significant, significant um, presence in the area. You know, this just gives you a sense of the, uh, the infrastructure that we have in place. Uh, really the crown jewel of everything here, this, this 800 ton per day mill, uh, you know, we can expand it to 1500 tons per day with minimal investment, but, um, you know, this costs 80 to a hundred million dollars to build. And, uh, and this was in 2020. So, you know, what does that cost today in, in 2023 dollars, right? And I'd, I'd argue that we got a, uh, phenomenal deal, you know, the wastewater treatment plant, it is absolutely state of the art. Probably a twenty million dollar exercise to do that there as well, and and you know uh, excess tailings capacity. I think I think we have all the pieces in place here to really have a solid go at this, and uh, and and really build some value for our shareholders, and and um, and ultimately make a uh, make some lasting changes to the to the community as well that we work in. Uh, you know, we we keep going back to this mill, but this is just a photo of of um, what we what it what it looks like inside, and I think. Um, you know, it's immaculate housekeeping. I think, I think part of that is because it's not uh, not being used every day. But uh, so, I, so I doubt when we are back in production, it'll be this clean. But but for uh, for everyone today, you know, let's let's, let's you know admire what a uh, wonderful piece of engineering this is. And um, and again, we keep it warm. We cycle through it. And and again, you know, we can we can expand this to fifteen hundred tons per day with without a huge burden um, uh, from from a capital standpoint or even on on permitting. You know, and um, and again, this is a slide that this this is a difficult conversation to have, and, and but but it's it's something that drove our due diligence process when we went into this acquisition, and and, and we knew we would be faced with these questions, and and predominantly that question is you know, you know what went wrong and and what makes you think that you guys can do anything better. And, and I think when we looked at it and, and, and we looked at, you know, from the financial uh, documents, you look at, uh, you know, the the engineering work that they did and, and, and basically that mine plan. One of the things that we realized was um, the underlying theme there was the, the pursuit of a sale, you know, and I think people that are close to the market know that, uh, you know, the group was, in fact, very close to, to, to having a, you know, a very successful sale happen. You know, unfortunately, uh, for one reason or not, it didn't happen. And uh, and then the previous group was forced to put this into production. So one, what happened was, you know, forcing a mine to go into production on a certain day, you know, forced them to scramble to source ore. So, so part of the ore that was sourced was sourced from what's known as the McVeigh zone. Unfortunately, with the Madsen deposit, what's closest to surface is also lowest grade. So, so one, that didn't work out. Um, you know, in terms of there's a lot of deferral of capital that, that was taking place here. So, you know, what wasn't cap, what, what should have been CapEx was put into operating costs. Uh, things like primary crushers were rented, uh, you know, and, and that, that's a big deal. And, and, and that led to, uh, you know, further, uh, further downstream effects. You know, I think, I think we can all remember back to a time where, you know, we were all on house arrest, wearing these masks well well you know covid very much affected the mine up there as well having rented crushers supply chains broke down certain um consumables were unavailable and the mine went offline for uh, for a period of time during covid you know so when you're not when the mine is not operating you can't service your debt and um and again there was just an underinvestment in in a lot of um aspects of the underground um you know the development and the and the def definition that was happening there so I think I think there's a lot to be learned, and um, you know, and, and having said all of that, there were a lot of positives uh, that that were in place. I mean, you, you don't win developer of the year by not developing something wonderful. So, so certainly, um, you know, the, the the people that came before us have given us a, a great place to start, and uh, you know, build on that on that tremendous work. And and then the other thing is, you know. 
you know, in this business, what, the one thing that um, that I've noticed is, um, you know, there's there's two luxuries that you don't get at the same time, and that is the luxury of time and the luxury of a balance sheet. Well, the beautiful thing about you know acquiring an asset out of bankruptcy is, well, you come out on the other end with no debt, so immediately our our balance sheet is vastly, you know, more powerful, uh, or stronger. Our you know our ability to raise capital, I think. Um, you know, is, is an inherent edge that we have. And then, um, you know, we are not beholden to any debt covenants. We, we're not forced to put this into production on a certain day. So, so you know, we have that luxury of, of time to really, you know, go back to first principles and, and define a resource that, that can be, you know, economically and profitably mined. In, in terms of our path forward, we already went through this um, earlier, but, but again, de-risk the resource, you know, it will be a... Um, you know, it, it will be a uh, quite a significant undertaking on the uh, on the underground development work that we're going to have to do and the the drilling. But but again, we are a capable group of people that that can do that. Then we're going to start doing certain you know trade off studies uh, and, and on the restart planning. For instance, we've got a 1275 meter shaft. That in itself is a you know what does that cost? I think we know you know at Macasa when they were building that new shaft, you know what what that that that's a two three hundred million dollar experiment often. So we've already got that. Perhaps there is you know a way that we can hoist ore to surface as opposed to hauling ore to surface. You know have multiple active mining faces going all the time. And and I and I certainly you know looking at it from today without actually you know being part of the the team that's doing the work. I I I get the sense that you know. It, there will be a lot of efficiencies there, you know, and, and, and that's our job to figure that out. And then, and then ultimately, you know, you do all the planning, you do all the work, and then you have to execute. And, uh, and again, that's a, you know, we're aiming for 18 to 24 months from now. Uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, what that, that plan, what does it look like with a bit more granularity? So, so this figure right here, what you're seeing that we've circled there, that lower grade McVeigh zone, that is what I had touched on earlier. You know, it's closest to surface and that's where, you know, the, the, the guys before us went to source or just so they could be in production on that certain day. But if you look at that, you know, when, when you look at that production history, we always look back to the August, 2022 month, you know, I think, unfortunately the, the team had lost uh, that had run out of time, but, but the turnaround was, was very close to happening that August month, you know, there was full mill availability, you know, they were putting six gram material through the, uh, the mill, ninety-five percent recoveries. I mean, things were humming along. It was just, it was just the end of that runway. But, but what, what had happened there was they had finally started tapping into what we've circled here as that, that higher grade zone. That's the, that's the Austin zone. And, and for us moving forward, you know, a big part of our restart is going to be to define critical mass in that Austin zone and figuring out how we can get there and, and, and have that sort of production profile at the at the start of our our mine plan and and, and really start uh you know driving a lot of value by by accessing that uh you know in terms of you know where do we think that we can you know that that low hanging fruit where do we think we can add and, and increase i think uh for us it's the the austin south austin uh, extensions are are places that um we look to uh to drill there's the derlac zone we can drill that from surface as well and uh, and again you know the madsen 8 zone is it, it, it's in place there. It's, uh, you know, 1200 or so meters from surface, but I think, um, you know, anyone familiar with the story can remember back to the drill results that were coming out there and, and, and just how exciting it is. And, and, you know, something that, you know, we will, we're not rushing to get that far deep. I think, I think, you know, we're looking to build value more so than splashy headlines. And, and I think it's, it's within that Austin zone that, that we really think that we can start, start driving that, that value building exercise. Uh, in terms of regionally, again, you know, we are going to take most of the drilling that ever happened was in and around the mine site. We're taking a, a step back and also looking at, you know, there, there's 47 square kilometers in and around the Madsen mine with significant showings. In fact, um, you know, we just put in a press release uh, that that we're going to be doing a drill program just south of us at, at that wedge target. You know, there's a small resource there, that, but but really it was the drilling and the, and the rocks and the proximity to the mine that, that kind of get us, get us excited. And, um, and again, we look to uh, continue to build on that sort of global resource in and around the Madsen area, but uh, a lot of ground that, uh, you know, surrounded by tons of deposits in the right area. And, and um, you know, we, we certainly look to uh, 
have a big uh, exploration effort as well uh, in in terms uh, on top of the uh, development that we're doing. And um, and again, this just gives you a sense of both our projects, Rowan and Madsen. Uh, they're 15, 14 to 15 kilometers apart as the crow flies. So obviously, uh, you know, when we look to exploit any sort of synergies between them, I think we'll look for ways to get that ore, um, you know, over to the Madsen Mill as uh, as efficiently as possible, possibly barging winter roads, again, to be determined. But, you know, based on our drilling, that Rowan deposit has a, you know, incredibly high grade resource, high grade even by um, by Red Lake standards. Uh, you know, early days, the rocks are similar. So we think we can just process them at, at Madsen. And, um, and again, you know, there's sufficient tailings capacity at the Madsen mine, and we can increase that mill size if need be. So I think there's, you know, I, and I said this earlier, but, but the Rowan project is certainly going to be a big part of the, uh, the future here at, uh, at West Red Lake and, and the Madsen mine operations. Uh, in terms of uh, the Rowan Gold Project, 827,000 ounces contained there. Uh, you know, multiple styles of mineralization. Obviously, the the high grade mineralization that um, Red Lake has has been known for. But uh, there is also the the potential to make a discovery similar to um, what our uh, what the guys at Great Bear did. That sort of you know fault um, that fault associated lower grade bulk tine, bulk uh, mineable um, resource. So, so I think there's um, a lot of excitement um, and, and a lot that can be done in, in and around the Rowan Gold Project. And, um, and hence, you know, just to give you an idea of, of, of how, you know, serious about this we are, when we, when we took this on, that resource that you see there, that's based on about 20 to 22,000 meters. Our first program that we contemplated originally was 17,000 meters, and we funded that based on that success that we've had we decided that we need to increase that program to 25,000 meters. So, so certainly we are making the investment at Rowan and certainly we are going to uh, bring that into the fold of, of, of all our future plans. Uh, again, just uh, geology and structure, very similar, you know, our key and greenstone um, hosted uh, orogenic gold deposits, structurally controlled. There's a number of large regional structures and, and smaller cross-cutting structures. And, 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 and you tend to find a lot of mineralization, you know, at the intersections of these structures. Again, it is very similar to most anything else you find up in, in Red Lake. Uh, our deposit, again, this just gives you a sense of, it's the, the steeply dipping high grade sort of ore shoots that, that come nearly right up to surface. So gives us a lot to work with. Uh, this is that block model and, um, you know, we are focused uh, in and around that Rowan zone, but um, a lot to drill in, in the area. And uh, and again, if you've been following the story so far, you, you'll, you'll know that we have been having a tremendous amount of success on the ground there. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, our capital structure, uh, you know, this is another thing that we did too. When, you know, when we came into this, we were a very retail product as, as, as you would be as an early day company, but you know, very quickly when we did that initial $25 million financing to acquire the Madsen mine, you know, we, be, we became a very institutional pro, um, product. You know, we've got the the likes of the Van Eck Gold Fund. These are large traditional gold investors, obviously, Ms. Rejustris brought resource lending as a result of the uh, acquisition. And um, and again, you know, Dan Pendleton, who we all know from Axelent, very supportive of the, of, the, um, of the project from early days through now. You know, we... I think we've got a good mix of um, of that retail shareholder base and certainly supportive institutional shareholders. Um, as it stands right now, we we've got a, about twenty million, eighteen to twenty million in treasury right now, and um, you know I think that funds a lot of our ambitions moving forward, um, and 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 keeps the project moving forward. And that and that's I think that's another one of the edges that we have, especially relative to our peers in Red Lake and and. Um, and again, we we just look to continue, um, you know, demonstrate, uh, you know, alleviating concerns. And um, and I know we're a bit of a show me story, so we we look to continue showing you what we can do. Okay, awesome. I think we've got a couple minutes for questions. So uh, there was just one thing that wasn't totally clear to me, which is Rowan. How far is that from Madsen? Is that is the plan to have that be mill feed? I, I didn't quite catch. Yeah, that. so we talked about regional opportunities. Is that one of them? 
Yeah, so Rowan is about 15 kilometers away from Mads. And as the crow flies, it's about 80 kilometers via trucking road. And um, I think one of the things that we're going to look to do is, you know, in the winter, there's a winter road that is much shorter. There's a lake that you can barge across. But yeah, we are certainly looking to have feed from Rowan fill our, our mill. I mean, the grade... The grade is extremely high and, um, you know, the rock types and all the mineralogy is very amenable to uh, being processed at, at Rowan or, or sorry, at Madsen. You talked about the regional opportunities and, and taking some time to figure out um, the underground opportunity at Madsen or at um, Red Lake Mine. I, I don't know. You're calling it Madsen again, right? So in terms of, uh, the, the underground. No, no, yeah, so, so we, so no, it's, it's the Madsen mine. Okay. The, the Red Lake mine is, uh, that that's evolution, right? Okay. So Madsen is like you said, you know, Claude resources, uh, pure gold, uh, you know, it's actually in the town of Madsen. It, it's been in production. I mean, for a really long time, it, it was, it was arguably one of the most prolific mines in the area, you know, before the Red Lake mine and, and, right. you know, there's, Sorry, I just got confused because I know Pure Gold renamed it. I think they renamed it Pure Gold Mine, but you've gone back. But that's neither here nor there. My question was going to be: Would you consider toll milling at Madsen while you figure out some of these other opportunities? Uh, you know what? It's it, it's something that you know, in terms of um, you know, something that we will will investigate if there. But but really, there's not a lot of um, you know, a lot of the ground in the area is controlled by senior producers there, right? You know, when you look at um, you know, Evolution owns uh, Battle North's mill up there as well. That I mean, that's a three thousand ton per day operation. So I think um, you know, if there are some junior companies in the area that do want us to process their material and 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 it's a way for us to you know bolster our cash position and make a bit of money sure we'll consider it provided that we don't have to make massive changes to our our existing flow sheet right got it and then one more question for me and i think magda has a couple technical questions so my question is you have a really strong board of directors with a lot of underground high-grade mining expertise how did you convince them to lend their name and expertise to an underground mine with a challenging track record? Yeah. So, so, you know what, I think, um, I, I think it, it was a buy-in based on what our plan was there. Right. It is actually, so if you talk to a lot of these people, you know, you, you talk to, you know, Mr. McCooch, you know, they were all familiar or, you know, even Duncan, very familiar with, with the Red Lake area. There's an asset that, you know, they've all liked, you know, there's historically, you know, a lot, we had, uh, you know, Mr. George Peary up, up to, to visit, right. Back when it with Placer Dome, this was an asset that they really always wanted. Right. And, and when we look at it, we look at the geology, you know, this is a mine that we think is going to, you know, go on forever as these projects do, right. These, these sort of Archean hosted greenstone belt, uh, or, or these Archean hosted load gold deposits, you know, they continue indefinitely, it seems to depth, like these mining lives, you know, it, it, there is still so much gold that's left there. The engineering that works that been that has been done is second and none. And I think when you put all that together, you put that into, you know, with, with the leadership that we we established, I think, um, I think we're a team that they all all believe in, right? And, and, and like you said, how do you convince someone to lend their name, especially people that, you know, I think that is something that's really important for people to look at. Why would these people put their name on something if they didn't think it was special? Thank you. And then one or two questions from me. You mentioned the resource um, infill drilling. Do you have a timeline for the resource update based on that? Uh, yeah. So we we will be looking, uh, you know, early next year to uh, to have um, in, in terms of we will be we're, we're actually we'll, we'll have a press release coming out with a more defined uh, timeline, but but we are looking you know in, in the first half of next year to uh, to get a lot of uh, that, that that resource work done in terms of um, you know and in, in, in terms of like PEAs like we we will be looking to to do a PEA with with all the assets uh, combined, but for that because we're working on it the drilling for that the cutoff would would have already happened right so. Right. So um, it'll just, so the PA will just be um, the Madsen mine then. Is that no, right? the Madsen mine and the Madsen mine and the drilling that has happened to date at Rowan, but we'd have to cut it off so we can put it out early next year. Right. And then you mentioned, you know, executing your vision for the asset with this 18 to 24 month restart. Is it um, like in terms of a mining plan, do you kind of expect that it will be similar like mining methods, stope sizes, things like that? Um, 
So I think on our end, I think that's part of the work that we're doing. I, I think, um, you know, one of the challenges is is making sure the development matches up with the mining plan. I think I think that was one of the issues, right? There, there's a lot of development that didn't access parts of the ore body. So, so I think I think we want to make sure you develop a, appropriately in terms of mining methods. Yeah, it's it, you know I think I think we're going to explore various underground mining methods, but effectively, you know, they've been mining there for hundreds of years, right? In Red Lake, it, you know, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. I think for us, it's just important to make sure your development matches up and lines up to those pockets of, of high grade ore. And then it's more of a mine sequencing plan. And then also having multiple active faces going at the same time. So you're constantly feeding the mill. Right. And you have still have all the equipment that was at site when? All, correct. So all the equipment that was not leased, we still have. Thank you. These were all the questions I had. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for yeah. participating in the fundraiser. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for having us. Thanks, Amandeep. Thanks for the update. Really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do with the Mads of Mine. Yeah, awesome, guys. Thanks a lot. And, uh, you know, we will share with you guys uh, in the next little while as well. Yeah, hopefully see you soon. Yep. Yeah.